Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this particular video, we will learn about algebra for mathematical olympiads like IOQM, American Math Competition and so on. We will learn this using a problem from ISI BSTAT BMATH entrance. This problem is related to this expression 3 to the power 2 to the power 1 minus x square. Question is, for how many values of x is this an integer? This expression is an integer. For example, for x equal to 0, this expression is an integer because it's 2 to the power 2 to the power 1, which is 9. For x equals to 1, it's also an integer because it becomes 3 to the power 2 to the power 0 which is 3 to the power 1, which is 3. So for how many values of x, and x can be decimal as well, for how many values of x is this expression an integer? We will solve this problem, but we want to actually unlearn an underlying concept. It's a very important concept related to inequalities and function how functions interact with inequalities. It's a subtle, fundamental idea from mathematics. It is used in many problems, so I want you to carefully learn it, and we will do that using this problem. And finally, I'll also give you a challenge question to solve at the end of this video, so keep an eye for that. So let's look at this expression one more time. 3 to the power 2 to the power 1 minus x square. This, this term 1 minus x square is between two numbers. So I'm looking at the range of this power. The highest value it can take is 1. Why? Because you are subtracting something from 1 and that quantity that you are subtracting the smallest it can be is 0. It cannot be negative. x square cannot be negative. So, 1 minus 0, anything bigger than 0 will make 1 minus that thing smaller. So, 1 minus 0 is of course 1. So, the smallest it can be is 1. The largest it can be is 1. 1 minus x square. And of course, it can be as small as you want. So, 1 minus, let's say, 3000 square will be a negative number, a very small negative number. So, this is up to negative infinity. Negative infinity, right? So, that's the range of 1 minus x squared. Now, what happens if I raise all three things to the power, 2 to the power that? So, 2 to the power minus infinity 2 to the power 1 minus x square 2 to the power 1. What happens? Will I keep this inequality? Will I be able to keep this inequality like this? Will the act of raising to the power of 2 keep the inequation in that? That is the question. And yes, it will in this particular case. 2 to the power negative infinity is actually 0. 2 to the power negative a huge number, so you're making the number really small and it converges to 0. So 0 is less than 2 to the power 1 minus x square is less than or equal to 2. But the real question is, why will this inequation be preserved? That is the conceptual point that we want to understand. So let's look at this using a simpler example. Suppose we have an inequality a less than b. And suppose we want to square both sides. Square both sides means we are actually looking at the function fx equal to x square. And we want to apply this function to both of these numbers a and b. We want to square both sides. What will happen if I do that? Will I be able to keep the inequality sign as it is? Well, it depends on the function f. For this example, the function is squaring. 
but it can be any function. What happens if I do the squaring? Now let's let, let's look at this. f x equal to x square. If you look at the graph of it, it is just a parabola, right? It's a parabola. So x greater than zero, f is an increasing function. x less than zero, f is decreasing, right? If if I'm so let me color code this. If I am greater than zero, that if it is larger than zero, as x increases, the function increases. Height increases. That height is the function, function value. So as x increases, the function increases. From x less than zero, for x less than zero. As x increases, if you go from left to right on x-axis, x is increasing. The function is actually decreasing in height. So it's a decreasing function. As x is greater than zero, it's an increasing function. This behavior is actually making the world of difference. See, if I take two negative numbers, let's say minus two and minus three. Clearly, minus three is smaller than minus two. F of minus three and f of minus two. Let's consider it. Since the function is decreasing as x is less than zero, since the function is decreasing as x is less than zero, from minus three to minus two, the function will decrease. So my at f of minus three, the height will be larger. At f of minus two, the height will be smaller. Function will decrease, decreasing from minus three to minus two. The function will decrease. So f of minus three is larger than f of minus two, which is exactly what happens. If you square uh, minus three, you will get nine, which is obviously larger than minus two square, which is four. So it depends on whether the function that you are choosing is an increasing function or a decreasing function. So, if again we have two is less than three, will the inequality be preserved if I squ square both sides? Of course, if two is less than three, f of two, two is smaller than three. F of two will be smaller than f of three. F of two will be smaller than f of three because two to three x increases, the function is increasing. So at three the height will be more, at two the height will be less. Yes, f of two is smaller than f of three. So if the function is increasing, so the bottom line, bottom line, is this: if f is increasing, inequality is Preserved. If f is decreasing, inequality is reversed, and that's why we can come here and say the inequality will be preserved here, because to f x equals to what is this function? f x equals to two to the power x. That's an increasing function like this. It's an increasing function. To the power, let's let's to avoid confusion, let's call it f y equals to the power f t equals to to the power t. It's a function to the power something. It's increasing, so the inequality is preserved. We discuss it in much more detail in our Math Olympiad programs and in our ISI CMI entrance programs. These are beautiful programs with five to six days a week problem solving, light problem solving. Some of them have one to one classes. Software access to practice and do mock tests and all all sorts of stuff. You can check the link in the description for more detail on them. But these are extremely important conceptual points. So two to the power minus. So this is zero. So zero is between two to the power one minus x square is less than equal to two. Okay, now let's do one more step. Zero is less than two to the power one minus x squared is less than two as an equal to. So let's raise everything to the power three. 
So 3 to the power 0 is less than or equal to 3 to the power 2 to the power 1 minus x square is less than or equal to 9. That's great. So 3 to the power 0 is 1. Of course, again, the inequality was preserved because 3 to the power something, that function is also increasing. So it's increasing everywhere. So this quantity is between 1 and 9. It's a continuous function, so it will hit all the values between 1 and 9. It's a continuously increasing function, continuous function between 1 and 9. So 1 cannot be achieved because it's less than, strictly less than. So all the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 numbers. All of these integers, this quantity will achieve all of those integers. Right? The only thing to understand, that this is the sort of the subtle point. The only thing to understand is, except for x equal to 0, which is for x equal to 0, this quantity becomes 3 to the power 2 to the power 1 minus x square is 9. Except for this value, all of them, all of the other values will be achieved using a 2x values. So, you have 7 times 2, which is uh, 14. 7 times 2, which is 14 and plus 1 for x equal to 0 you get 9 so total 15 values of x will make this an integer so that is the basic solution of this problem there are answer is 15 but there are a lot of theoretical underpinnings of this particular problem you learn a lot from this one i will give you a challenge question 3 to the power 2 to the power 1 minus x cube. What can you say about this? How many, for how many values of x is this an integer? For how many values of x is this an integer? So that's a challenge question. You can give with reason in the chat section. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested, check out the beautiful mathematical programs that you have at Chanta. And the community that we have, we are engaged in mathematics. Last time in, our, in the Indian National Math Olympiad, 11, I think 10 or 11 out of the 78 candidates all over India were from Chinta. We are deeply involved in this mathematical science journey. And I think you will love the entire process. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Keep on doing good problems. Bye.